today I have a haul of makeup that I purchased in Spain. I went crazy in their drugstore makeup aisles. Honestly, you guys, I didn't do any research before shopping, so I literally just went to brands that I'd never heard of or didn't know what they were or they didn't have them in the US. I need to do some more research next time. So for those of you who are in Spain, can you let me know what the viral products that I need to pick up that I can't get in the US are? Any Spanish brands that I need to try out? Let me know if I can get them from Truni. Did I say that right? Truni. <laughs> Primor, and I also want to try some of the makeup from Deli Plus at Mercadona. But anyways, I just stopped in the other day at Druni. So if you go to Spain, definitely check this place out. I would say it's the US equivalent to Ulta because they do have drugstore brands, which are the aisles that I rated. I just didn't want to spend too much money on products I had no background on. They also have luxury brands, like it's better than Ulta because they have like Chanel, Dior, all of these crazy super luxury brands. They have crazy skincare sections, so big, an amazing fragrance section, and they even have pharmacy stuff, which I find very funny. They have it at Primor too. Primor, oh gosh. I'm trying to say authentically but they have it at that store too. Also, if you go to Spain and you're looking for luxury makeup, you need to go to El Corte, El Corte Inglés. You need to go there. That is like heaven with the luxury makeup, but I really wasn't here to work. I just wanted to pick up a few things. But like I said, if you're from Spain, let me know what the viral products I need to check out are because when I was at the store, I had no clue what I was throwing into my bag. I got home and I researched some of the brands, but I definitely want to go in with a little bit more eyes wide open next time, some more knowledge. But let me show you what I picked. Up. So these first items are going to be the least exciting, but I picked up some Batiste dry shampoo. I got it in the blush flirty floral scent. Honestly, I haven't really been working out as much while I'm out of town. So my hair has been a little bit greasier because I haven't washed it as frequently. So I got some dry shampoo to keep at my in-laws house. And I also just needed a new hair clip because I lost mine. So I picked this one up. All right, so this first brand that I picked up, you can get in the US, but I don't think I'd ever seen it in a store near me. Maybe I have, but it's been a long time. I just saw that they had JCAT Beauty. So this is an LA-based brand, <laughs> nothing special in terms of being European, but I wanna show you what I picked up. So first I got a new shade of the Priz Metal Chrome Eye Mousse. These are amazing, and JCAT's such an affordable brand, but these are like, luxury stunning quality these have the most beautiful glimmer to them they really stand out on the eyes i love this product it's one of my all-time favorite drugstore products or affordable products for the quality being so high quality the next item that i picked up from jcat are the vanity goddess chromatic pigments so these look really beautiful they are a loose pigment so i can't use it because i didn't pack a glitter glue yet but jcat has these beautiful single eye shadows and i thought that this one would look pretty all over the eyelid i know loose pigments aren't as popular right now but they really do have an extra special gleam to them and again it's only for a few euros so i picked that up and then the last thing that I picked up from JCAT is a product I'd never seen before. It looked really, really cute. So these are the JCAT Blush Mellows Soft Blushers. The packaging is so cute. It comes in almost like MAC style packaging. And it's a soft kind of putty cream blush. I did put it on the apples of my cheek today. It blended really beautifully. I can see myself enjoying this in my routine and it gives that really pretty blushing petal pink look. So I'm excited about this. I enjoyed testing it today. Another brand that I got into, and I purchased a product from them a while ago, like when I visited Spain, I think 2019, but it's a brand called Miss Cop, and they definitely don't sell this in the US. From what I could see online, it was a French brand, I believe. So the makeup artist that started the brand was French, the name is based off of French words. I love seeing where these European products are made in. So I picked up in two eyeliners. 
So one was made in Germany and then the other was just made in China. So the one that was made in China are, is the Star Liner and it's like a metallic rose eyeliner. I didn't realize what the color would look like because it was sealed, they didn't have testers. But it's just this like metallic rose gold liner. It's really gorgeous. I wish I had gotten a different shade because I feel like this color is going to look awkward on my eyes. However, the quality of this seems really nice. It dries down and doesn't move no matter how much times I kind of roll over it with my fingers. So we'll see if I'll be able to incorporate this some way into my routine. I really don't see it. I wish I'd gotten a different color, but it looks beautiful. And then this one I'm so excited about. This is the perfect liner and it's a lip liner. I wish I gotten it in a light shade, but this is number zero one and it's a dark brown. This is like a lip stain lip liner similar to the Palladio that uh, went really viral because it's like a lip stain so it lasts longer and it doesn't move genius product i love this i mean today's the first day that i'm wearing it but so far the longevity seems incredible and it's very easy to apply if i have the chance because i am leaving in a couple days but if i have the chance i want to buy more of these i'm really into these i also got a lip product by bourgeois and i believe bourgeois is a cody brand yes it's a cody brand so this brand has been around for forever it is a french brand and this product is made in england i don't like this product though this is the rouge velvet ink and it just looks really chunky on my lips i also made the mistake of purchasing a heinous color i don't know it looked different on me than it looked in here if i'm being honest i picked up the shade beige du jour it was a lot more yellow than i thought it was going to be now the packaging of bourgeois is really beautiful it is an affordable brand but all of the products are inspired by paris parisian women but no while the packaging is beautiful this product is not and if i'm being honest i was like swatching some of the products that they had out i wasn't impressed by the brand in general so let me know what the good stuff are from there because the packaging catches my eye but i'm just not feeling it like maybe i can put a little bit in the center of my lips it almost just looks yellow it's not cute and it it doesn't have a smooth blend it kind of smells like paint this one i think was simply a fail okay i have two more brands that i rated so the first one you probably have heard of this brand before if you've been around in makeup for a while i picked up a number of things from max factor now the story behind this brand is really interesting one of the most famous and first hollywood makeup artists started this makeup brand in LA. The brand started off for like film and stage makeup. And then eventually I believe it was bought out by Cody in the most recent years for $500 million. Wow. But I'd heard of this brand before and it's because they did used to sell this in the US in like 2010, maybe a little bit earlier, but they decided to discontinue selling it in the US and wanted to push CoverGirl more so they thought the sales for cover girl was doing better and it had more potential so they discontinued selling the brand in the u.s and promoted cover girl instead but these are still products available in europe obviously but one thing that i also thought was really interesting when i was reading up on the brand pat mcgrath in 2004 was actually like the creative design director of some sort something like that so pat mcgrath had her hand in this brand for a little bit a long time ago but let me show you what i got interesting quality products um one thing i want to say i do not have good judgment right now because i am out of routine the weather is so dry and cold here my skin is whack right now like it looks gross and dry so i feel like i'm not going to be able to fully judge these until i get back into my routine in miami but i did pick up a couple complexion items i was just excited to see this brand honestly so i got the max factor miracle second skin hybrid foundation i purchased this because my skin's just really really dry i wanted to see if i could get like a really hydrating makeup as this one's supposed to be oh by the way 
I'm really interested in where these products are made. The Bourjois lip product was made in England, as is this Max Factor product. I got it in the shade Light. This looked chunky on my skin. Again, my skin is a little weird right now, so it's not going to be able to have a fair shot, but... I did not like this because of how chunky it looks on my skin, but I, I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt that it's me and not the product. But yeah, I got this and I'm not that impressed, honestly. <laughs> and then the other complexion product that I got is the Miracle Touch Cream to Liquid Foundation. I don't know what it was about this that caught my eye, but it did. Now this is interesting. This is made in the USA. So this one definitely gives a lot fuller coverage than the other product that I purchased. It's a little dry, though again, my skin is also just dry, so that might be why I don't think it's sitting as pretty, but I definitely like this one a lot more. I guess a girl just likes coverage, but I think I like this. It's a bit too early to tell. I picked it up in Sand 060. I'm liking it so far. I also picked up a concealer and this one I think I'm really liking so far. It seems pretty hydrating on my under eyes. This is the Facefinity Multi Perfector. This one is made in the UK. It has a nice big fat wand to it and it has lighter like medium coverage but it seems pretty hydrating i haven't set with any powder yet and it looks really nice on my under eyes so so far i think i am liking this but i'll keep you guys updated i also purchased this miracle pure infused cream blush this also just looked like it was going to be really hydrating these go in the same line i didn't find this the easiest to blend it does look pretty it has almost like a metallic reddish shift it does not look like how it does on the packaging at all but what caught my eye about this product is it was made in italy and if you don't know Italy makes my favorite beauty products. I just find they have the most success rate for some of my favorite quality products. So I was excited about that. I'm not moved by it yet. I got it in the shade Vintage Peony. I'll keep you guys updated. We'll see. Again, my skin is weird right now, so I'm just not a good judge of character for these products. And then the last product I picked up from Max Factor was this lipstick in the shade Burnt Caramel. This product is beautiful. It's made in England. It has a really smooth glide over the lips, and I love this color for the winter. I think it looks so pretty with a dark lip liner, but it still is a very neutral wearable color. So I definitely recommend picking this one up. I love how it feels in my lips. It has a 30 month shelf life. That's really long for a lipstick actually, but loving this. I think the last brand that I'm sharing with you is the brand that I'm the most excited about. I don't know, is it not a cool brand? I have no clue about these, but from what I saw, I felt like this brand had the trendiest style of products. It's called Gosh, and I looked it up. It's a Danish brand, and all of their products are made in Denmark. I love the authenticity here. I love that it is a Danish brand made in Denmark, and the products were really trendy and cool. So I picked up, you already know what these are kind of emulating here from Charlotte Tilbury and they're affordable. These are the blush up and shape up. We have cream contour and cream blush. I got the cream contour in the shade fair medium. So far I really like this. I think it did a great job. It doesn't have as good of a blend as the Charlotte Tilbury. It also is less watery than the Charlotte Tilbury though so it gives you a little bit more true pigment but I haven't had an issue with this. I think I like it. The Blush Up Cream Blush I got in the shade Rose. This one has a nice pretty pink glow to it. If you don't like kind of a glowy metallic finish though, I don't think you're going to like this product, but these seem like pretty good drugstore affordable alternatives if this brand is available to you and Charlotte Tilbury is not. I really like these, these were fun. Also from the brand, I picked up, this is kind of like a Huda Beauty dupe, I feel like. This is the matte and metallic iconic shadows. They had two shades at the store. I picked up 001 and this is actually not made in Denmark. I like, but it's made in Italy, which we love that. And it worked really well. So there's a matte 
kind of liquid eyeshadow they added a pretty base and then the other side i don't like that it's a brush applicator that's really thin almost like an eyeliner but i did put it all over my eyelids and it gave a really pretty glow i really like this product this brand i'm really liking the products for so i enjoyed this i also picked up two eyeliners uh these are the matte eyeliners so i picked up one in mocha and then the light one in nude so far i think these are good they're both made in germany germany makes really great pencils uh the nude one is holding on pretty well in my waterline nothing amazing but still good and i have to really see for wear but the mocha it had a little bit more stickiness and drag than i prefer for my eyeliners but it's a really nice dark color and it was pretty easy to blend out with a brush so i'm not mad at these i think these are good and the last product of this haul is a trendier product again from gosh it's the soft and tinted lip balm as spf 15 and i got it in the shade berry now this product is made in denmark and it only has a six month shelf life this has a nice tint to it i'm happy i picked up this color but it is a little bit watery when i was applying this i did find the product to kind of go outside of the lip line so i don't think i'm jumping for joy on this i think i like my tinted lip balms to be a little bit thicker but i still think so far it's a nice product i mean i haven't gotten much use out of it so i can't say too much but that is what i picked up on my little mini shopping spree in Truni at uh in uh, in spain <laughs> in total i spent i think 170 euros which isn't bad i mean i know i rated all of their more affordable brands but there was a couple more high-end brands that i saw that looked really nice i just didn't really know where to begin with them at the store that i'm curious about i don't know maybe next time i come back to spain i can come back a little bit more well researched on the beauty products here i just find it hard because you know i am technically on vacation here but yeah and that's everything i picked up i had a lot of fun playing with these i can't wait to continue messing around with them i hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it very entertaining since these are if you're based in the u.s more different products than you are used to seeing i know i had fun and i'll catch you guys in the next one bye guys have a good one